This is a short presentation about wind action or Aeolian processes, focusing upon wind erosion and made some major landforms which are created. It's suitable for AQA AS geography and specifically the arid environments unit. So before we get into the erosive features that are created um, by wind action in a desert environment, it's important to just understand how exactly sand is transported in a desert, and it's done so by, by the wind. And the amount of material and how far it gets moved is dependent upon several things. So first of all, it's to do with the speed and the direction of the wind. Also, it's to do with the turbulence within that wind. And then the duration, how long the wind blows, and over um, what type of surface. So what is the regolith like? Is it undulating or is it flat? And then finally, the thing that also determines how much um, material is, is, is transported by, by the wind is the presence or lack of vegetation. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about the way in which sand is moved within a desert environment. So the wind direction is very, very consistent, and that is what's driving um, the movement of the sand. So the heaviest material is dragged along in a process which is called surface creek, creep. And then medium-sized material is moved along in hops, if you like, in a process which is called saltation. Um, and then the lightest material is picked up by the wind and carried um, in suspension. So it's moving around through through the air. Now, um, sortation is a process which is effective up to about 1.5 to 2 to two meters, and up to two meters, and. Um, it's sort of blown along in gusts often. Now suspension, which is the finest material, um, allows sand to be carried vast distances. So it's possible that uh, material from the Saharan desert can sometimes fall on the British Isles, is what we call um, red rain. Um, and the suspended material has to have a diameter of less than 0.15 millimetres. Um, when winds um, have, have high velocity, that's when we get huge sandstorms. Here's a rather imposing image that shows exactly what a, a sandstorm might look like. And um, as you can see, it would be quite scary. And hopefully you can also imagine from this how material can be carried up high into the, the atmosphere and moved over large distances um, across continents. So um, I think it was last, last springtime when um, lots of people complained of a sort of red dust which had fallen on their cars around London. And that was from um, Saharan desert sand that had been carried from North Africa all the way across Europe to, and then landed on the UK. So the, most, the first major form of wind erosion to look at is something called deflation and what happens here is that the wind removes loose surface material and carries it away. As the finer material is transported, um, deflation leaves behind a rock-strewn surface which is known as a desert pavement. So at the top here you can see that uh, in the beginning the rocks are sort of evenly spread within the cross-section of sand and then as the sand gets removed, gets taken away by a process called abrasion which we're going to look at in a second, the rocks pile up upon each other and then eventually we have a dense concentration of rocks at the surface <coughs> of the sand and that gives us this formation which is called desert desert pavement. Now the wind is very strong in desert environments. The reason is because of the, as the great diurnal temperature range that we have. So remember during the day temperatures within hot deserts can be 40 degrees plus and then at night they can be down to um, close to or, or, or below zero. And what that means is that as the air temperature varies, the ground temperature takes a longer time to vary. So the differences between the ground and the air temperature mean that great winds are created, um, both during the day and during the night. So that means that the winds are very, very strong. And that's what's really driving our erosive processes in this arid environment. The second type of erosion is called abrasion, which is, um, of course, a word which is familiar uh, to geographers who have studied coasts and, and rivers like like you guys um, have, I'm sure. So what happens here is that the, the material which has been picked up um, by deflation, the sand, is able to um, batter, if you like, the sides of rock and uh, it creates 
some interesting some interesting features. Uh, the stronger the wind, of course, um, the more sand, sand that can be carried. And you can see the bottom uh, diagram there, this one here, that um, the again rather like rivers actually. That the heavier material is is dragged or bumped along. Um, uh, in a process which is called saltation, where smaller particles are actually picked up and moved in the air, um, and and created, uh, sorry, and moved in in suspension. So, the wind is hitting the side of the rock because the dominant wind direction will be quite consistent in in most desert environments, um, and over a period of time, the side of that rock is polished; it's eroded away. So we have one. Um, flat end, if you like, and the remainder of the rock, in this case, you can see quite clearly, um, is, is how it was. <clears throat> then over a period of time, that rock will actually, as it gets smaller and smaller, actually be turned around by the process of the wind. So the features that are created by this are quite quite considerable, and here's a really um, interesting large-scale arch, and you can see that the, the centre of that, that rock has been, has been hollowed out. So uh, I think that's a really interesting thing to look at. It's worth adding as a final point on this that the small stones which are created by um, <coughs> abrasion um, are called ventifacts, V-E-N-T-I-F-A-C-T, ventifacts. So those small stones which are um, eroded on one side with a polished face and then jagged off, if you like, or remaining with their usual uh, previous form on the, on the other side. So um, here's a really interesting example of a particular landform which is created by the process of, of deflation, and these are known as deflation hollows. Um, as the name would suggest, these are sort of large, um, open areas of, of depressions within, within, within the arid environment um, that are created by the process of uh, deflation. So they're formed when um, wind removes vast amounts of surface material, and uh, in parts of North Africa, deflation hollows can cover hundreds of kilometres square. Um, the largest one is the Katara Depression in Egypt, which has the deepest uh, point of about 100 metres below sea level. Um, and actually, it's, it goes so deep that it uh, goes down to the, to, the, to the aquifer or the water table. Uh, you can see that here. Um, and so it actually forms a very um, lush uh, area of vegetation. Um, here it is in northern Africa, um, not far away from, from, from Cairo. But um, yeah, very, very deep depression, um, and it creates vegetation which is at odds with its surrounding area. They aren't always on such a large scale. Here is a deflation hollow, which is just part of a very small sand dune system, um, and a beach environment, and again another arid environment. Um, and you can see uh, you know, how it is deflated, how, how, how much deeper it is there. So um, let's just try and explain a little bit more carefully now how these uh, deflation hollows are created. And what you need to start off with is a underlying bedrock which actually has um, depression um, as part of it for, for whatever reason, maybe previous erosion or, or weathering has happened. And then the um, sand is overlain and it begins um, being entirely flat. Um, so we've got a bedrock um, at the bottom and then the sand over the top. Now as I mentioned previously, you get some very, very strong winds um, in a desert environment, and they're moving predominantly in the same direction all the time. As they're moving along, they are uh, deflating, picking up material and moving that along, and abrading as it goes. And in the area where, in the area where we have the depression, um, more sand is removed, and over time, this um, deflation hollow begins to form, and the wind dips down into it and begins to spin around within the deflation hollow. And you get these um, the dip forms, and it's sort of self-fulfilling, if you like. It keeps on getting deeper and deeper and deeper. So the wind is coming into this, this hollow, and it's spinning around in this eddy before it makes its exit out. Um, and that spinning around, that eddy, is, is removing um, the material and is creating our deflation hollow. So there you go. Um, quite quickly, that's how deflation hollows are formed. So one of the most common features that we get created, or rather another common feature that we get created by abrasion is something called a yardang. Um, and there are some pictures of some yardangs here from Western Sahara. Um, so here's a, here's a single yardang <clears throat> on its own. 
And then here's a, a swarm of yard angles which are created uh, next to each other. In the foreground there's some which are, which are, which are lower and in the background there's some which are much higher. Um, they can reach um, heights of up to sort of 100 metres or so and they can uh, run for, for, for several, several uh, kilometres um, uh, in, in an arid environment. Their formation is owned, owed rather to being um, the fact that they are small sections of um, upstanding parallel uh, hard rock and um, they're separated by, by grooves or, or troughs which are, which are cut by the abrasive process. They're aligned in the direction of the prevailing wind. It's important to note that yardangs are consistently found only where there is um, the same type of, of rock when there's different types of rock so when there's a, perhaps a harder rock which is underlain by a softer rock they're called something slightly different which I'll come on to in a minute so um, yardangs are so called only when they're consistently associated with one type of rock so the penultimate feature we're going to look at is something called a rock pedestal <coughs> which I think is you agree, quite quite a staggering looking thing, quite an odd looking thing. Now what happens here is that um, the erosion of this rock has only occurred at the, the base of the feature. And this area is a less resistant rock. Now the reason why it's only occurred at the base of the feature, so the reason why this section here has been eroded and not that section, is because wind erosion is only effective... Um, up to up to a height of about 1.5 meters. Okay, so I showed you that diagram earlier of how uh, a, the abrasive process is able to pick up and move sand. That only works up to a height of about 1.5 meters. So any heights over that, the effects of abrasion are severely diminished. So this area here has been heavily eroded by abrasion, but the top section has not. This is also um, a less resistant rock. So with our yard angles, remember we had the same rock type going all the way through, but with this rock pedestal, there, there are two different types of rock. <laughs> now, this is a, an individual rock pedestal, but we can get large scale sections of, um, of, of, of these that are created. So they create long ridges where abrasion has um, eroded the softer rock, leaving the, the harder rock upstanding. And um, this creates a feature which is called a zugen, a zugen which um, actually looks a little bit like a yardang, but is different because it, there's clearly defined um, hard and soft rock. So Zugen is associated with different types of rock, whereas a yardang is exactly the same type of rock all the way through. And on a smaller scale, it's called a rock pedestal, which is what we have um, an example of here. A quick summary just to go through what we've looked at. So sand is moved in arid environments um, transported via either surface creep, siltation or suspension and erosion occurs due to deflation um, or abrasion and some commonly found landforms are deflation hollows, yardangs and rock pedestals and there's a nice diagram at the bottom, a nice, sorry, a nice image from the Western Sahara of a, uh, a yardang within a deflation hollow so two of those things put together <laughs>